Lego My James O. What's up, everybody? It's Lego My James O. If you haven't seen the series already on how to create your own Brickling store, check it out because this week's episode is still going to help you create your own Brickling store, and I'm going to talk to you all about your personal My Store settings in Bricklink. If you're curious about other items, check out my other videos or leave a comment if there's something I haven't got to that yet that you really want to see or that, uh, that you need help with for starting your own store. So we're going to go into Bricklink now. I'm going to show you your store terms. And uh, as always, please subscribe and like the video if it helps you. All right, so go ahead and log into Bricklink. Today, I'm going to talk to you about your store settings, but there are also your account settings that we'll discuss in another video. If you hover up here to my store, there'll be settings right here that we're going to do. And if you're at my brick link here, there are also the settings feature, but we'll, like I said, I will discuss that in another video. Today is going to be the my store and settings. So if you've seen some of my videos already on helping you create your own brick link store and getting up and started, I have already discussed some of these features on here. I'll leave the links in the video for the other videos that where I discuss those certain uh, items. For now, let's get right into it and we'll just start right off the bat. So the first tab here under store settings is display. So display is kind of where you can edit things for your storefront page. You know, how does it look? What do people see and read? So up top here, you have your store name. You can edit that. You have your slogan. Mine is just helping Lego fans one piece at a time. You could have something creative. You don't even need a slogan. Um, a logo. Custom logo would be great. I don't have one yet, so hopefully. I should really make one, to be honest, or just put the Lego My James O logo. Um, and then colors as well for the style of your store. Then you can have announcements. Announcements are great uh, for displaying things like, hey, I'll be away, or I'm on vacation at this time, or a lot of orders are coming in, everything will ship out uh, three days from now, or, you know, orders are backed up, however you want to, whatever verbiage you want to be. And then banner, I don't typically have a banner, but... I could show you, if I just typed hello again, because that's what I was trying to do earlier, um, this is where a banner would display. So you could quickly just hit preview storefront, and this is what the store would look like. And then the banner, as you can see, is right above your shop feature. So it's another way where sometimes you might want to put the exact same announcement in the um, in, as a banner as well, so people are guaranteed to see it. So for right now, I don't have a banner. And then, so down here is store landing. This is kind of what buyers see when they enter your store. And sometimes I argue if this matters or not, because when buyers typically enter your store, if they are searching parts or sets in your store, that item typically just comes right up and that's the first thing they see. Versus if you were to type in James Brick Warehouse on Google and select that link to my store, it would bring you to my store and it would bring up whichever item I select here. So I typically just do featured groups, so it'll show things that I recently listed or new things for sale or items that are um, discounted, things like that. You could also choose to show your store terms. You know, if you want people right off the bat to know, hey, these are the fees, these are my store terms for shipping, insurance, so forth, you could show that, or you could show a splash page. So, but I always show featured groups. And yes, so that's really all you need to know on this page. Up next, we have store management. So store management is typically just where you just, um, all the information you need for saying if your store is open, if you have a password, um, what customers are allowed to shop there, things like that. So right at the top here, we have store status, mine's currently open. We can auto close it if we want after a certain number of days. So if you're somebody where you're thinking, hey, if I don't log on in a while, I want my store to shut down because that obviously means I've been very busy with work or something else in my life so you're not um, you're not ready to sell at the moment. Store passwords, these are just for buyers to bypass a closed store and still shop and see what you have available. You know, sometimes you can have that number and then you could close your store and then, you know, reach out to people and say, hey, here's the, here's the number if you want to shop because they can still message you, but they cannot access your store inventory. Minimum buys and average lot values, like I said, I don't have one. Some stores do the $4.99 minimum buy when you're starting out. Others do 10 and I've seen stores even with a $50 minimum buy. All that means is you can you have to spend that much to place an order. Average lot values. I, again, I don't have this because I don't want to discourage customers, but you might want this for a sake of, you know, 
having smaller orders or each order cost, uh, you're getting more money, so to say, because a lot is any one listing. So if somebody orders, if I made my lot value a $1, that requires that the average lot, everybody would have to spend a dollar. So if a, a brick is 10 cents, they'd need to buy 10 of those. Now, granted, if they bought a $50 set, then they could also tack on a couple one cent lots and it wouldn't matter because it's your lot average. Um, lot limits, so you could you know make a limit. I don't have that um, as well, I don't do those. Bypass passwords for when your store is closed or if they don't meet these requirements and you say, hey, it's a minimum of $5, you know, somebody might reach out to you and say, hey, my order is $4, I really just want that, can I please place the order? You would send them whatever your bypass word is. You know, if it was like one, two, three, you'd tell them they could put that in and place the order. It says new buyers are users with less than 100 days of account activity or five positive feedback um, from different legitimate sellers. So this means they have to, they can't place an invoice, they have to pay directly or they can't place an order. That's pretty creative, you know, so I might actually consider selecting that in the future. And then use an invoice when they can't use any other methods. That's what I like to have. Um, so that typically just means if any of my shipping methods don't work, they can send over an invoice. I'll calculate it and send them back uh, the corrected invoice with a, uh, a feature on it to click and pay. Store currency, U.S. dollar, because we're in the United States. And then sales tax. So you can adjust sales tax here, but BrickLink charges sales tax for everybody now, and they take care of that. You shouldn't need to do anything with this, um, but feel free to read up on it. And again, as you know, taxes are very important as well as business taxes. And I'll have a video on that sometime. But for now, don't worry about this because BrickLink collects the taxes for each order. Next up, we have store inventory options. So mine's set to accepting quote requests. All that means is somebody can put a bunch of things into their cart and they can send over a quote. It won't pull it from my inventory, but it allows me to see what they want. That way I can calculate how much it will cost to ship it. I could tell them, and if they like it, they can continue with the order. Or if they're displeased, they can then say, um, they just say they don't want it, or they ignore it. Um, you can disallow members with negative feedback from your store. It's probably best to do that, that way you're not canceling orders. I still give people the benefit of the doubt, but uh, you know, lately I've had a couple canceled orders, so I'm debating on switching over to that. Typically canceled orders happen with members that are new to BrickLink and don't understand that when they send an order over, the bill's gonna be higher because of shipping and fees. You could choose not to show the weight of your products in your store for buyers. That's typically just for them not to be able to see how much they think it weighs and then they can't argue with you about shipping. Um, and then I always email myself the copy of invoices and then inventory down here, um, you can, I don't enable my cost input because I don't, I do that all behind BrickLink and in other, you know, platforms, but you could enable that and then write down what everything costs you as you list it. Um, I like to enable my weight because I can change a weight for a product that way. For example, when I'm selling a cardboard box, the weight typically doubles because you're not only selling that box, but you're putting it in another box to mail it. Um, price guide. I like showing price guides. It shows on average what things sold for, so it helps you for listing things. Um, you could have multiple stock rooms. This is cool. I don't have that at the moment, but you could have things, depending on how you're organized in your room, you could have things sorted into stock rooms A, B, C, and so on. And that would just mean that, you know, you might have a shelf where it's items that are in stock room A. So you could put stock room A all on uh, live on at, for sale at one point in time and leave stock room B offline. It's just another method of organization. Um, and then you could show date last sold for things, just some other random features here. Section, all it really is, feel free to read up on it, but it allows more traffic to your store from users on other websites that can see your BrickLink inventory, and then they would be able to select your store and purchase from you on BrickLink. So it's just kind of cross navigating. It's the same as showing Instagram posts on Facebook, even though, you know, Facebook owns Instagram, it's that same concept. And then I need to change my address because this is my old apartment. So yes, that's where your store address would be. Okay, so I talked about terms in another video. If you're interested in seeing store terms, check out this video. They're very important to have. A splash page, I don't have input on a splash page for any of for you at the moment. 
but a splash page is really just a custom page of your store, maybe a little description about you, why you're involved with Lego sales, what you collect, things like that. And on your store, it would display right here in an additional tab, and it would just say splash page. So you can click that. I, I should probably make one uh, you know, to be a better store, a better seller. Sometimes people appreciate reading those. It's just a little thing about you or your store when you started, you know, just some little background information. All right, shipping. I talked about shipping. This is a very involved section. If you're interested in learning about shipping, please check out, where's the video gonna show up? It's gonna be here. You're looking at it this way? Yeah. Check out shipping. Shipping is gonna be right here, I think, or here. But if you're interested in shipping, check that video out. It's very, uh, an important one. And I might even make a second one someday on it just because it's quite involved. I'm learning, I'm trying to get better. So I'm trying to make videos, you know, faster or more efficient. I'm trying my best, I just wanna help you start your store. So that's why I say I might do another shipping uh, video at some point. Payments, I also talk about payments in another video. So please check out the payments video if you wanna get paid. And then lastly, message templates. This isn't too, you don't really need to do much with the message templates, but what I like to, you can, you have a default for every single option here and then you can choose to edit it and make something custom. The one thing that I make custom is my invoice. So I just add, you can, you don't wanna change any of this code, it kind of just stays that way, but what you can change is where you have comments. So under comments here, I just said, you know, it says, this is automated, so Bricklink already created this, but then under here I put, you know, spaced it down and just wrote, you know, if you have any questions or concerns, about your order, please message me. If not, your order will ship shortly after I receive payment. Thank you, James. Okay, so you can add and adjust things in here. This is a nice spot where you can edit something. That way people can, every invoice you send, they read this and they just see that. Um, that way you don't have to type it up every single time. When I first started my store, I was typing everything, but then I figured out this default method. So there's that. And then I haven't touched any of these other ones, but you know, I might look to do, um, I might do a coup, uh, video on coupons eventually because that'd be something fun to get into. You know, you can send everybody that shop places two orders in your store a coupon for 10% off their next order or whatever you want to do, but you can make that custom or default and always have it sent out. And then a lot of these are basic. You don't really need them. Um, the drive through emails I don't send. That's pretty much just a, a quick message to them saying, hey, I shipped out your order. I they typically see the notifications in PayPal that the item is shipped and they get the tracking that way. So that's why I don't do the drive through emails, but some customer or some sellers do. And it is, it's kind of nice getting that email saying, Hey, it ships. So then you're like, okay, sweet. And sometimes they tack the, um, tracking number on there. Um, and then again, like you can adjust your quotes. So when you're sending somebody a quote over, they read it, um, in the way it is or however you have it edited, but typically here's the default. So, you know, you don't want to change much of this because it'll just um, update that information, but you can add comments in certain sections. So as they read through it, they can see that custom comment you wrote. So again, I personally, I don't mess with much of that unless, you know, I really know what I'm doing or if there's a major reason. The invoice is mainly the only important one. All right. So... And that's about it. Right down here, there's just a little thing that shows how many items you have in your store and how many lots they're in. And then you could choose to visit your store. So, and then it comes up just on the shop page. So like I said earlier, I set it to featured. Sometimes it'll just show up and say uh, terms. I don't know if people will be able to see that right away. That's really all you need to know about your My Store settings in BrickLink. There's a lot of important features on there that just help you edit your store page to make it better um, for customers. It makes it more customized and makes it, you know, probably more attractive, so to say, when customers look at your page. So I hope that was helpful to you. If you have questions or if there's something in there you wanted to know about that you're, I either talked about it or I didn't and you just don't understand it, please leave a comment. I'd be happy to help you with what the information I know. Some things like the splash page that I haven't done before, I won't be able to answer too many questions, but if I ever do create one, I might make a short video on that to help you. So thanks for checking out this video. Please like and subscribe if it, if it helped you and uh, look out for a set review tomorrow. So thanks again, guys. I'm Lego my James-o. <laughs>